I'm Nick Lindsay, I'm chairman of the Klein Heritage Society in Brora in Sutherland. Um, I've been chairman for the last seven years and I was a founder member ten years ago when we started in 1998. And my name's Jackie Aitken, I'm, I was born and brought up in Brora. Um, I joined uh, Klein Heritage Society eight years ago um, and I am the uh, I suppose I'm the society archivist and very much interested uh, in the history of Brora and Sutherland in general. In 1998, two gentlemen, Willie Gunn and Hamish Bruce, who are no longer with us, um, they set up the society and I became involved straight away. We're set up to be the guardians of the heritage of the parish. Um, it's a really rich and very cultural and heritage history we have here. Um, we've got a wealth of uh, industrial uh, remains and heritage, um, we're part of the clearances, we've got modern history, we've got the lot in Brora. Um, I'm particularly interested uh, in the 18th century um, Sutherland, which is a period in history that we don't seem to know too much about uh, in the Highlands. Um, I'm also particularly interested in the industrial remains at Brora. Um, these remains at Brora are of national importance to Scotland's history and it's exceedingly important that we don't just preserve, what, but that we promote what we have in Sutherland at a national level. Uh, today we're at Klein Kirkton the graveyard which we've become involved with over the last uh, eight years. We took it on and um, we've, the council maintains it, but only to a minimal extent. We've carried on that and we've become sort of trustees of the graveyard, if you like. And uh, we've, we've changed the face of it, really, and made it smarter and uh, more appealing to for visitors. When we came here eight years ago, you literally could not see the bell tower. It was covered in, uh, the mound was covered in winds. Um, and the graveyard itself, um, one third of the graveyard you could not gain access to. And this was, we were receiving lots of um, um, people who were pretty distressed coming to this graveyard to try and find their ancestors, and they just couldn't find the stones to begin with, and they were appalled at the condition of the graveyard. Um, so at that time, we certainly took up the, the challenge and uh, we uh, came with a, a band of uh, willing volunteers from the community. And uh, we, as, as Nick has said, we literally have um, maintained the graveyard, cleared it from um, extensive vegetation. Um, and the graveyard is a great place now um, for visitors from all over the world to come and trace their ancestors. And we are very happy to also say that this year um, we are going to have some um, explanatory leaflets for the graveyards of Klein which will be uh, available at each of the, the graveyards in the parish and in the village so we're very pleased about that. Kirkton uh, um, was built in 1775. It replaced an earlier church which was on the same site. Um, it's a, an ancient historic religious site because we've got uh, picture stones which are discovered here. And uh, it was enlarged in 1827 to seat a thousand people. It had um, upper and lower galleries. And in 1843, 16 years later, it was subject to the disruption, uh, which is when the free church was uh, started in 1843 church became disused. So you can see you can see uh, various aspects of the church. This used to be a door here, um, but it was blocked up. The galleries were dismantled when the disruption happened, or after the disruption. Um, and this used to be the centre of population. But when Brora began as a village in the early 1800s, the centre of population moved about two miles to the south of here. And that's why there was a need for a new church within the village. started clearing the graveyard of vegetation, um, it was always thought locally that uh, the freestanding bell tower um, was also used as a watch house. Um, and then when we cleared the graveyard, we actually located what uh, certainly appears to us to be the actual watch house within the graveyard. Um, and just behind me you can see the chimney of the watch house. Quite a lot of Highland graveyards did have watch houses and you've got to remember this was in the time of the um, 
uh, probably the late 18th, early 19th century, the time of the birth and hair scares, uh, which were happening uh, much further south. And this is where, um, I suppose, people were, were stealing the bodies uh, from the newly dug graves, and they were carrying those bodies away down south, and they were using them in anatomical experiments. Um, this threat certainly moved like a, a, a tidal wave very quickly from um, the south up to the highland area, where it was an exceedingly uh, religious area. So um, as a solution to this, most of the graveyards built these watch houses. Um, basically, when they knew that somebody was going to be buried, um, somebody, or two people in fact, would stay in the watch house for three days after the new burial was placed in the graveyard. And it was said that after three days, the body was no longer any use for their experiments, so then that would make it, a, it, would make it safe, and the, the people in the watch house could, uh, could leave it. This is, this is one of the treasures we have in the graveyard. Um, it doesn't look much as you see it here, but I'm using a, the rubber part of a, a windscreen scraper so you can take it off without damaging the gravestone. And if you look carefully here, you can actually read This is in French. Any schoolboy could hopefully uh, translate this. It says in French, ici cor de John, over there, Mackay, and the township name is Dalvet, there. And it says on the bottom line, Mort l'année 1779. So this says that John Mackay from the township Dalvet died here in 1779. The basic translation is EC. Here is the body core of John Mackay from Dalvet, died in the year 1779. Now, we have no idea why this is in French. There were The House of Sutherland had connections with France, we know that, and it's possible the best solution we have is maybe that he was married to a French maid who was with the House of Sutherland and they came back here to live. Um, and maybe when he died, she insisted that the inscription was in French. It's a high quality inscription, so the, the man, the family had money, obviously. And it's a beautiful table stone when it's completely uncovered. And this one on the other side is his parents, who also died in 1779. The carving is exactly the same. We don't know what happened in 1779, but that's in English. This is in French. So maybe the French wife insisted that it was in French, because there would be no mason here who could carve or read French, so it must have been done by a French person, or ordered by a French person, maybe. But that's one of the mysteries we have. Um, maybe one day we'll get to the bottom of it. I'd like to think so. is all our Sutherland Highland graveyards are fascinating places. They're, they are full of our history. You don't have to read the books. You go into those graveyards, you see the place names, you see the people's names. They, there is a wealth of information on Highland gravestones. And it's only now that um, we've got lots of people um, in the Highlands who have become very interested in recording that information. And uh, we hope that in the future, we need to get that information digitized so that it's available over the internet um, and it's available for all people all over the world to access.